What is going on you guys? Alex Chasen back here with a brand new video. And today, let's talk about Brandon Ingram and the New Orleans Pelicans. All summer long, the question has been in New Orleans, what is the future of B.I. on that team? Earlier in the summer, they traded for, as we all know, DeJounte Murray, bringing in a secondary star to pair up with Zion Williamson. But is he going to be pairing up with Brandon Ingram? That is the question that has been discussed all summer. Well, in recent reports as of yesterday, it seems like Brandon Ingram wants to stay in New Orleans. And on the front office side, it seems like the Pelicans want to keep Brandon Ingram. But there's one thing they can't find common ground on, the contract. B.I. wants a max deal or near a max deal. The Pelicans are a little hesitant of giving B.I. that much money. With the new CBA and the tax aprons, the new B.I. contract would easily put this Pelicans team well into that second tax apron, and the Pelicans aren't really sure if they want to go down that route. And the reason why this is all in question now is because they brought in DeJounte Murray. His new contract extension kicked in this season. It's kicked in right now, coming into this year. For the next four years, he's under contract. That's a lot of money on the books. Zion Williamson is making millions and millions of dollars over the next four years. And then, of course, CJ McCollum has a couple years left, making around 30-something million dollars. So they have a lot of money on the books with those three guys. And they see B.I. and they're like, we don't know if we want to pay you 45, 50 plus million dollars with the new CBA. Contracts are go only getting higher and the penalties in those aprons are pretty significant to then build out a good rotation around your stars. So what are the Pelicans going to do? Well, as of right now, it seems like B.I. is going to handle this like a professional. He's going to come into the season with no issues. The Pelicans, you know, they ultimately do want B.I. on this team. But there also is another question. How is he going to fit? Because a couple years ago, he was the star of this team. Last year, it didn't look as much as this was his team anymore. Of course, Zion Williamson it has kind of formed into his team as he's gotten better over the years. But B.I. looked like more of a superstar a couple years ago than what he did last year. And I don't know if they want to pay someone who could be the third option on this team all that money. And on top of that, there's a lot of mouths to feed. Now DeJounte Murray... CJ McCollum, Zion Williamson, and Brandon Ingram. How does B.I. fit into this rotation over the long haul? Right now, I think it's fine, but if you want to pay him so much money, you're expecting four or five years of a great fitting rotation between those guys. And on top of that, ultimately some success in the playoffs. And I don't know if management really feels comfortable giving B.I. that much money if the fit might be in question. Because CJ and DeJounte Murray, I think they can work off each other very well. Zion Williamson plays a different game, but then at that wing position, it's Brandon Ingram. He's a ball dominant player, like the other three guys. Having four ball dominant guys, I'll give CJ a little bit of a break. He can sit in the corner and play a different type of game, but he is relatively ball dominant as well. Nothing like DeJounte or Zion or Brandon Ingram, but I'll, I'll give him a break. So we'll take CJ out of it. That's still three ball dominant guys in DeJounte Murray, Zion Williamson and Brandon Ingram. And I don't know this for sure, but if I'm the Pelicans, you see Herb Jones, you see Trey Murphy III, in no way, shape, or form do they have the offensive capabilities of Brandon Ingram. B.I.'s upside is superstar level, of course. But look what they bring to the overall team game. They play defense. They can also shoot the ball on offense relatively well, especially Trey Murphy. I think they could live with those two guys if Brandon Ingram wasn't in the picture down the line. Right now, again, like I said before, B.I. wants to stay on the team. The Pelicans want to keep him. B.I. is going to be a professional. And it seems like the Pelicans are okay with an expiring contract coming back onto this team with that looming all season. It seems like the Pelicans are okay with that, which is kind of unheard of because most GMs and ownership groups hate to deal with that. Look what happened with DeMar Rosen. He walked for free all season long. Are the Bulls going to trade DeMar Rosen? Nope, he walked away for free. Paul George, those contract talks went up and down all season long. Ultimately, he walks away for nothing to the 76ers. I don't see the Pelicans wanting to go down that route. I think there's two options here. And it's going to be tough because they should be a good team. They should be 
above a play-in team. They should be that six seed. If anything, at worst, they're that seven seed because the West is so packed. Either way, they should be a great team this year. They brought in DeJounte Murray, especially if B.I., his head is still in the game. But my point is, you can't let Brandon Ingram walk away for nothing because you still have some holes to fill. Your center position. Right now, it's Daniel Tice or your rookie center you drafted, Eve Misi. Neither of them are answers to the solution of your center position. In my opinion, Zion Williamson should be starting at small ball center because he's more of a center than any of those two other guys. At least proven. Of course, Daniel Tice is a great backup. And maybe Eve Misi could be a good rotational piece, but he's a rookie. And if you want to be a winning team, you cannot rely on a late first round pick rookie to fill that hole. In my opinion, and maybe I'm wrong, maybe Eve will be great, but we still don't know. And you really need to find a solid fix to your center position. So my two things are, you cannot let Brandon Ingram walk away for nothing. If it's midseason and you're great, you ha I just think you have to pay Brandon Ingram. You have to pay him. If it's midseason and you're great, things are looking well, you have to pay B.I. Because if he walks away for nothing in free agency, that, that's, a, that's a huge mistake. The second thing, if it's midseason and you're not performing as well as you would like, trade Brandon Ingram and fix your power forward slash center holes. That's a must. So you either trade Brandon Ingram for a hole that's needed. Because let's just say they bring in a capable center. I don't know who it is. There's no rumors right now. All I know is Brandon Ingram's market's not great. So there's nothing really right now. But maybe at midseason, someone like DeAndre Ayton or Robert Williams, Robert Williams becomes av available in Portland. Maybe. We'll see. Because they just drafted Klingon. So I feel like one of them might be available down the line. Go after that. Because if you fix that center hole, you bring in someone that fixes a major issue and like I said before, I think Herb Jones and Trey, Trey Murphy III can slide into that starting rotation and this team can still be great because you have Zion Williamson, who is the undoubtable superstar of this team. You still have DeJounte Murray, who just brought in, CJ McCollum, and Herb Jones and Trey Murphy fit at that wing position very well. Ideally, you keep B.I. and it works and you also find a way to get a center. But if there's a way where... Or if, it's a pop, or if it seems like it's trending in the direction, you're not going to agree on a contract, get a center in return for BI and fix a hole that is much needed. Let's take a look at the projected starting five for the Pelicans coming into this season. Of course, it's not confirmed. We haven't even hit training camp yet. But in my opinion, the most likely starting five for this team. At point guard, DeJounte Murray. At the two, CJ McCollum. At the three, BI. At the four, Zion Williamson. That's set. Your center is either, is either going to be Eve Misi, their rookie center, or Daniel Tice. That is their only option for center. In my opinion, I think that is so unknown, at least in your rookie. And we know the capabilities of Daniel Tice, a good backup center. In my opinion, that's about it. He should not be starting on a championship level team. I think it's so blah at your center position that, like I said before, I think it's a good option to maybe start Zion at center and bump Herb Jones into that starting rotation for some great defense. And also, at least you have a superstar at your center. I know he's not the height of your normal center, but it's Zion Williamson. I don't need to explain his capabilities down low and how he can body anyone in the paint, no matter their size or weight. So at least that is a possible option, but that still doesn't fix the issue there. You still need a good center. And I think it would honestly be better if Zion Williamson was playing his natural four position. But as of right now, while I don't have an answer for center, that could be a possible rotation option for the Pelicans. All that said, this is a great team minus their, you know, center confusion. Jose Alvarado off the bench, Trey Murphy off the bench, Herb Jones coming off the bench if they're not doing the idea I just brought up, Daniel Tice off the bench, or Eve Missy. Again, they're still good backups in my opinion, just not starters, especially the rookie who hasn't even proved himself yet in the league. Jordan Hawkins, I think, will take another leap this season. He had a really good rookie year. He proved that he has the capabilities to be a really good rotational bench piece for a long time in this league, and that's only an upside for the Pelicans, especially if they get rid of B.I. That's another bucket getter that can come off the bench and fix, you know, some points you're missing there if you get rid of B.I. So I think overall, if B.I. is there or not, this team is still a play-in hopefully playoff team. I think they are still, especially if they get a good return, that being a center that is most needed on this unit, I think that is still a playoff team 
for the Pelicans. And who knows, that might work better for the Pelicans. We still don't know the true fit of Brandon Ingram alongside the Jante Murray, and then still having Zion and CJ around them. We still don't know. We don't know how Zion will fit around DeJounte Murray. We have to see it into this season. But since B.I. is the man coming into an expiring contract deal, he is the odd man out if someone has to go. And obviously, you're not going to trade Zion. So that, that's obviously a no-brainer. So hopefully you guys did enjoy today's video. That is my opinion on everything going on in New Orleans. All summer long, there has been rumors and conversations but as of now, B.I.'s market is not too high. He wants to stay in New Orleans. The Pelicans want to keep him. But we've heard that before from so many players and teams. At the end of the day, if contract talk talks don't go the way the player wants or the team wants, he's going to be out of there. I don't think it's going to be now. I am positive it's not going to be now. But look towards mid-season or early in the season when they really have to try to make a decision of the direction of that team because it's hard, though. It really is hard. If the play Pelicans are playing great ball, then you know it's going to work, and then I would give B.I. that contract then or give it to him in the offseason. If it's midseason and you're not looking as good as you would like, that means the B.I. fit, the you know, the, comp the compatibility there is probably not as good as you would like, then you move him. That is my opinion. So I'll see you guys very soon. Let me know down in the comments below your take on this entire Brandon Ingram situation because it is a little bit confusing. I'll see you all very soon, and like always, peace out.